So I'm going to go ahead and push record and start. So hi guys, I'm Sue Brooke, and if you don't know me, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can kind of just get an idea of who I am here. Um, share my screen right here. All right, so I am, and I hate like, you know, talking about myself that much, but just so you kind of know why I'm here and like how I might be able to help you um, with your business. I am a business and marketing strategist, and I'll tell you how I got there in a second. Um, I'm a professional speaker, author, relationship marketing expert. And um, it's how I built my business. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you, June. Okay, I also, my claim to fame is owner and founder of Educational Learning Center. So back in, oh my gosh, I was a teacher. <laughs> and I started my first business, actually, I went to college to be a teacher, but my first business was actually a ballroom dance studio in the middle of Nebraska. And, um, and that's a whole story within itself. But when I was 22 years old, I got the entrepreneurship uh, bug and I opened my own business. And that's kind of where it all started. Then I was a, um, I was a teacher. Then I uh, later on, fast forward, um, I married a musician and I basically gave up my life for 13 years to manage his entire music career, which was a lot of fun. Um, when that went sour and he left and I was left all by myself, um, shortly after that, I was in a really horrible car accident. Um, I actually shouldn't even be sitting here today, <laughs> um, but I am, and there's a reason why I'm here. You know, I'd, I'd given up a, my whole life to manage someone else's dreams and make them come true instead of my own. So back in two, actually, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Just last week, it was my 13 year anniversary of that car accident, which uh, I was hit by a truck in my little Volkswagen Beetle convertible. And um, that was the day that really changed my life. And so rather than me making the other guy a rock star, the, my husband a rock star, now I'm, that was, I just made a decision that that was going to be me. So I started, I jumped in, I went, to, I worked at Sylvan Learning Center for a while and um, I didn't like the whole corporate thing. And I started tutoring out of my house and um, that's where my business started. Uh, after about 19 years, my I sold my business. It was a 5,000 square foot educational learning center. It was absolutely amazing. And so I sold that because I wanted to help small business owners. And I, I know how hard it is. I've been there, done that. I know how absolutely hard and scary and sometimes you cry yourself to sleep at night. <laughs> and I just, and I've been there and done that. And my, my passion and my drive and my heart is helping entrepreneurs Stop spending so much time and so much money on things that aren't working in their business and moving the needle forward. So anyway, that's enough about me. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to, okay, so today we're going to talk about tracking your most profitable customers. Most profitable is the key word. A lot of people think, I've asked people, who are your customers? I've asked people in the skincare industry, Lainey, so if you're still in here, um, you know, I say, well, who is your customer? And a lot of them say, well, anyone with skin. But that's not, I mean, I don't think the person that's maybe drunk underneath the, the river, down by the river, that has no money, um, is your customer. If he has skin, probably isn't your most profitable one, right? So. Thinking about and, and put, kind of have that in your head today about who your most profitable customer is, the one that's going to pay you, that is easy and fun to work with. We're going to turn them into raving fans and having them knocking down your door with referrals. I just love that. <laughs> so um, I have to share this because um, this is what kind of instigated this whole thing. Um, a year and a half ago, I got a crazy message on Facebook that said uh, from this woman who said she was a cousin of my mother's. Well, my mother died when I was eight years old. So I don't remember my mother um, and I lost track of that whole side of the family. <laughs> and she, anyway, she said, it looks like you have a half sister. And long story, very short, um, it turns out that our mother came out to California from Nebraska. I'm from back in 1954 she met a Navy man got pregnant and gave a little girl up for adoption and the one that's right next to me on the right hand side that's Kathy she lives here in Sebastopol I actually moved here a year ago to be with her the picture on the left is you know Kathy and then me in the middle and my sister that I grew up with Lori and the the 
the album there in the front, that's a picture of our mother. And uh, there's a whole story about how Kathy actually found out who her father was. Um, in that story is pretty absolutely amazing. And the picture on the right with the two of us is the first day we met and we did not plan those outfits. Just so you know, <laughs> pretty cool. So why am I putting this picture up here? We got pet people in here. It's when I moved up here a, a little over a year ago, I didn't know one single person. I literally packed up everything and I put my two cats in the back seat of my Volkswagen convertible and I moved to Sebastopol. I didn't know one single person except for her, my sister, my new sister. I didn't even know her. So here's what happened. So she went off to work and I went, oh my gosh, I have to start a new business. I have to meet people. What the heck am I going to do? So I packed up my stuff and I got my buttons up early, really early in the morning. And I would go to networking groups and, and chamber mixers and, and just any place where there might be business owners because my avatar or my, uh, in other words, my ideal client are business owners. So I'm like, well, I got to meet business owners. Where am I going to do that? So, and how am I going to, to build these relationships? So this, what I'm going to teach you today is what, you should be doing every single day in your business to build relationships because everything is about that. I know you saw, you probably saw my banner and my title for this was crackpot marketing. Well, my question to you is this before we get started, what kind of food would you rather eat out of? Would you rather eat food out of a crock pot or a microwave? <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess that you're saying crock pot. I lived for many years on microwave when I was working in a business and I was living by myself and it was just easier to put buy those gross microwave meals and they tasted terrible. So crock pots are way more, way better food. Well, you liked eating it out of those much better. So the thing is, here's the deal. Microwaves are really fast. You get food really fast when you're hungry, put it in a minute later, you got food, right? Crock pots take a lot of time just like relationships, right? So today we are going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about building relationships, which is number one, retention, how to retain those relationships, and how to get referrals. Because the whole thing is your business should be 100% referral based. So that if you are going to pay attention to a lot of the things I'm going to teach you today, this is going to get your business. If you do everything I'm telling you to do, I promise your business will be about referrals. I seriously get calls every day or every week, at least several times a week of people that want to refer me to people. Crazy. Okay. So we're getting in. I hope you guys are all taking notes. Here I am sitting here. I can't really see anybody. So I'm hoping you're all, all still with me. All right. <laughs> so there are three types of relationships that you need to focus on. Okay. The first one, you have to have the foundation, which is your relationship with yourself, okay? It's all about you and who you are. What is your why? I'm sure, you know, when we get into business where everybody says, okay, what is your why? Why are you doing this business? That's way more important than you might think. Because if you're just in a business just to make money, for example, I actually met someone the other day that I asked what the why was. And she said, because I want to make a lot of money. Well, you know, She's not getting anywhere. She's been doing the same business for like a lot of years and she's not making any money because her why is not in the heart. Okay, we're gonna talk a lot about heart today. What are your goals and what makes you unique? Okay, I know there's several people in here. For example, there's three of us in here that are know about the paw tree. We're referral partners or um, pet pros in paw tree, okay? So what makes you unique, okay? Realtors, holy cow, there's three million realtors in just my county, right? Each one of them has to be unique. So your relationship with yourself is number one. And it's a really good idea to really sit with yourself and really lay that out. Okay, I'm going to spend a little more time on this because literally this is the key to success in all areas of your life. Personal, business, everything is your relationship with other people. So, of course, the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. A, that should be a normal thing that you do every day. 
giving caring and humble especially to those who cannot currently offer you anything in return okay how many of you i'm curious and and um we can ask i can ask this later but have any of you ever been in the starbucks line and someone behind or someone in front of you paid for yours that actually happened to me the other day it was the craziest thing it's like they're not getting anything from me they don't know me and they gave they did something from their heart to do that and wow did that feel amazing okay the next one this one is interesting how many of you think about this if i bet you know someone right now that you you know them and you see them and you watch them and and they're kind of grumpy <laughs> they're not like they're not very nice people really they're they're kind of they're just they don't have that touchy feely kind of thing but the kind of person you can watch them they might come up to you and all of a sudden it's like a you flip a switch and all of a sudden they're nice and sweet and happy and everything and then when they walk away they flip the switch back and being grumpy again <laughs> i bet you know people like that um don't be that person <laughs> being nice should be who you are who you are just practice being a nice person um the system that i've been using that um actually a couple of people was talking about i'm going to tell you about in a little while is has really honestly made me a better person and a nicer person okay not that i wasn't before <laughs> okay this bottom one oh how many of you have met somebody let's say for coffee or maybe let's see you're at a networking group or wherever and you're talking you're meeting someone for the first time and you ask them what do you do tell me a little bit more about yourself and they say they start talking you know and, and then um they're loving talking about themselves because everybody loves to talk about yourself right and then as soon as it flips over and you start talking about yourself it's almost like they're staring right through you and they're not really paying attention have you ever have anybody do that to you those are people that are thinking about what they're going to say next act like they don't even care about what you're saying so the best way to establish a relationship with anyone besides being kind and caring and giving is take a personal interest in other people one of my favorite things to ask people is what is your story what is your story everybody has a story and you know people are absolutely fascinating so Take a personal interest in other people. I promise you, if every day you meet someone new and you really honestly want to know all about them and let them tell, tell you about them, they will, they will turn out to be your best friend. Trust me. Not enough people do that in the world. <laughs> okay, and why we're all here today is your relationship in business, okay? At the end of the day, this is really important. End of the day, honestly, and some of you are going to go, no, that's not true. People aren't buying your products. They're not really buying your services. They're not buying offers or gimmicks or any of that. They are buying you. People only do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. People are really buying you. So if you think about that as you go through your day and you meet people every day, be the kind of person that people want will buy something from you even if they don't need it. Okay, I've done that so many times. I buy things from people I don't need all the time. All right, so think about this. Your business is about taking care of people. It doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't make one bit of difference what kind of business you're in. Your business is what you do, okay? It's what you do every day, all the things that you have to do for your business. Taking care of people is who you are. So that's what we're talking about today. The better you are at taking care of people, the better your business is going to be all in all. Uh, got a thing going on here. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Tech things here. Okay. Here's a big one. No one cares how much you know until they know that how much you care. Theodore Roosevelt, lots of people have said this. Here's the bottom line. I have to tell you a story. So in my uh, during business, we had an after school program and a summer camp and a private school and the whole nine yards. And um, the thing is, there were, uh, there was this woman that worked for me, okay? And she was a director. So a new parent would walk in the place and she would start talk, telling the people all about herself and how great she was and what, what uh, you know, if she had any degrees and how great she was at this and how great she was at that. She just kept talking about herself. 
she didn't spend very much time asking the parent about their kid, okay? People really don't care how much she knew. They cared about how much she cared. So when I talked to her, I said, I want you to turn something around, try this. When people come in, I just don't want you to listen. I just want you to listen, ask questions about their child, ask questions about what they, their issues are, and I'm telling you, everything changed for her. So think about that. Take an interest in other people, you know, show that you care about them. And it's way better than telling them all the things that you know. <laughs> um, another story really quick is there's a girl that um, is in my community and I see her at a lot of networking events and she sells like a hemp oil. It's one of those companies that do the hemp CBD thing. And when she talks about this, this kind of thing, she, <laughs> all she does is tell about all the ingredients in it and how it does all these things to their endocrine system or something. I don't know. She talks like a doctor or rocket scientist. So everybody's eyes are kind of spinning around. So <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's like, no, just tell me that whatever this thing is that you're selling, how it's going to take away my um, pain or how, how it's going to help me feel better. Um, Okay, so this one is the better you are at mastering relationships, the better you will be at thriving in your personal and business life. Okay. Um, all right. Now, here's another one. So I usually put this toward the front, but here's the thing. Relationship marketing. I'm sure you've all heard relationship marketing. A lot of people mix things up. The, the, Emphasis should be on relationship, not on marketing. A lot of people hear relationship marketing and they decide, they think, oh, I have to put all this time and money and effort into that, but it really is the opposite. 80% of what you do should be focused on building relationships and only 20% on marketing. So you do have to do some marketing. Can't take that all the way away from you. But you can do it in a different kind of way. Okay, this is going to be a really good section. I'm curious how many of you go to networking events. I'm assuming that you go to maybe chamber mixers or networking events or meetups or something where you are out there and everybody has, what, a business card, right? Like the people in the front there, they're passing out business cards and talking to people. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, you know. People, here's what I have found, and I believe me, I've been to so many networking events this past year living in this new community that this is what I've seen over and over again, is I meet so many people, they hand me their business card, the first thing they want is mine, and then what happens? They start spamming me, they start calling me and texting me and, and Facebooking me or whatever and trying to sell me their stuff. So I'm going to turn your whole world upside down about how you should how you should view networking. I promise you, networking is gonna be one of your, your best ways to, build, to begin to build relationships, but you have to do it a certain way. So here we go. Now, um, when you go to a networking event, okay, you're gonna meet someone. And actually, it's not, it's anywhere. You can be in a line at Starbucks, I keep using Starbucks as an example. <laughs> a lot of people stand in line at Starbucks, if you meet someone there, you start talking to them, they're a contact, just like at networking events. But I'm going to use that as an example. So when you meet somebody, they're first of all at the top of this bucket here called contacts. Well, that person that you meet is going to fall into one of two buckets, okay? First one is the prospect bucket. It's very possible that someone you meet could possibly turn into a prospect. Very possible which could turn into a customer. They might want what you're selling, maybe, but I like the other way around. My favorite is the referral bucket. And I'm telling you, the referral bucket, um, you're, you're gonna be getting yourself into a, a huge, oops, I just went backwards, sorry. <laughs> All right, I clicked the wrong thing. Um, the referral bucket. Referral bucket is where you meet someone, they might not want what you're selling. They might not need it at all. But I promise you, they have a lot of people that they know. And if you build a relationship with that person who is not gonna buy your stuff, they, if you build a good enough relationship, they're gonna tell their entire network. And did you know that people know, you know, minimum 100 to 250 to maybe 500 people. So, wouldn't it be better to 
build relationships with all those people you meet at the networking event and get so that they will tell their network. And that gives you lots and lots and lots of possible customers to pick from. Okay. Opportunities, I love that word. This is my favorite word is opportunity. I have a whole entire talk that I do on opportunity. Create each contact, every contact that meet, every person you meet as a referral partner. You guys, some of you are meeting me for the first time and I'm offering, I wanna meet you all individually so I can learn way more about what your business. And I promise you, I could be your best referral partner ever. And I might not want what you're selling, but I could be a great referral partner. So treat everyone you meet as a potential referral partner rather than a potential customer. Focus on building the relationship. Ask them, get time to know about their business. I'm fascinated by some people's businesses and what makes them unique. Find out who their ideal client is. That's like the best, the best question you can ask anybody that you meet. Who's your ideal client? And then I promise you they're going to tell you and you're going to go, oh, I know someone that could, I know your ideal client. I've got someone that I can tell, tell them about you. So it's pretty fun when you start doing it. Okay, I, I th I'm throwing in a few bonus tips here and there because this is just, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but this also goes this, along the same thing. Business cards. Okay, I just have to throw this in because this is one of my biggest pet peeves and a lot of people don't think about it. Business cards. Please put a current photo on your business card. Okay, this picture right here, that's my business card. Look how basic it is. It's my picture, it's my name, it's my phone number. The back of it has my website, it has my um, email address. Uh, that's it. It's just that. And my website is suebrook.com. Okay, so it's super easy. And then when you go to suebrook.com, you can see the things that I do because I do more than just one thing, right? I'll put a current photo on your business card because people do business with those they know, like, and trust, but only if they remember what you look like. <laughs> I have, I, I, I bet you guys have a whole two box full of business cards that you've collected. And I promise you, if you would just go and start going through the cards, see if you can figure out who all the people are that don't have their picture on the card. It's just crazy. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't remember them. The other bonus tip I have that I'm throwing in here today is always have a professional email address. Okay, if you have a Hotmail or an AOL or a Yahoo email address, it doesn't look professional. Okay, it's so easy to get yourself a professional email address. Go get a domain name. Everyone should have their, their name.com, like suebrook.com. You should have your name.com. And then you can create, if you have that domain and you have a website, um, I mean, you don't even have to create the website yet. As long as you have something like sue at suebrook.com, it's easy for people to remember. Plus, it makes your, your uh, authority is totally elevated. And then I have one more bonus tip. Sorry, you guys, I just can't help with throwing these in here. <laughs> um, capitalize the first letter of words. Did you guys know that? Um, so when I write, like you can see my email address, sue at suebrook.com, I capitalize the S, I capitalize the B. Why is that? Because some people's names go all scrunched, whoops, all scrunched together. Oh shoot, I just spilled some tea. Uh, all scrunched together and people don't know. They don't know what, what, they have to try to decode it, so don't do that. So anyway, even when you put like a, a website up or anything like that, capitalize the first letter. <laughs> just another crazy bonus tip. Okay, back to our, oh no, one more, I have more bonus tips for you. Email list, okay, and I'm gonna get into this in a little while, but I just have to share. Um, a lot of times people go get an, uh, web, uh, their business card and then they take that and they put it on an email list and start spamming them with emails. Okay. First of all, I'm going to go into the email thing in just a minute, but, um, never, you, you always need to ask people before adding them to an email list. That's so, so important because the very last thing you want to do is meet someone, put them on an email list, send them an email, and then, um, have them click spam <laughs> because you can actually your emails can actually mark the spam no matter what your email is and they may you'll never be able to email them again also this is also really important another bonus crazy outside the box tip but it's not really be sure and use an email management system when sending your emails 
you need to make sure that you have an unsubscribe option. So I put this thing up here, MailChimp. If you guys haven't heard of that, super awesome way to add people to your email and keep track of them and then be able to send them emails. And if they don't want to hear from you anymore, they just click the easy unsubscribe. Okay, back to our regular scheduled program. Hope you guys are still with me. Oh, some of you are still here. Okay, it's not who you know, it's who you get to know. That matters. I like that. And it's not who you know. And this is big, 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 you guys. It's what you do. It's not who you know. It's what you do with who you know. And that's what we're going to talk about. All right. We're going to get into that here in a second. Oh, follow up. How many love to follow up? <laughs> I just talked to, I don't know, it might have been June. Uh, somebody um, talked about how they hate follow up. And most people are like, oh, yeah, I don't really know what to do. People don't like to call people, whatever. I'm going to give you an amazing follow-up system that is so much fun that you are not going to be able to help it. People do business with people they know, like, and trust if they remember you. So fortune seriously is in the follow-up. All right. 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. 80%. So if you get a business card or you talk to someone or you meet them for coffee and then you never contact them again, going to forget about you. They really, really are. Um, someone told me the other day, they have a store and she said, well, I have all this great stuff in here, but why don't, why aren't people coming in? If people like the stuff, why aren't they coming in? That's like, what are you going to do? They're not thinking about you. So you have to let them know about you. So you have to follow up and keep in touch. So using a follow-up system to stay top of mind is the best, best, best way to do it. Okay, so I have to talk about emails for a minute because you do have to bridge the gap between high tech kind of things and personal touch. How many have emails that have, that one says 99,000 some odd emails in there? I probably have way more than that. Someone the other day had like, I don't know, 200,000 unopened emails in their email box. Um, did you know that only about 11% of emails are open? And I believe that is actually getting lower by the day because that was a statistic I looked at quite a while ago. But here is the crazy thing. Check this out, you guys. Even if they open your email, even if they open it, only 2% of emails are actually read. You know, the, the example that I give all the time is getting an email that says in the subject line, it says, you won a million dollars in publisher's clearing house, right? So it's like, oh my gosh, I might've won. So you, you open it. So they're getting a little notification that says, ooh, Sue opened the email. But as soon as I look at the email, I can tell it's, it's just junk. I didn't really win. <laughs> and so I'm not gonna read it. So emails, I promise you guys are going out. Um, the business that I owned when I first started, we didn't have the internet going, and it was all, it's how I built my educational learning center and my, my dance studio also, because we didn't have email and all that stuff back then. And I, my business actually went through the turn where internet happened and email happened, and um, email was huge for a long time in the whole, you know, you've got mail era. I promise you, curve is going back down to relationships. I thought I just saw this the other day. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. 15 years ago, I was like, oh, I got all these letters. And uh, it's like, ding, you've got mail. It was so exciting. <laughs> it's like they even have that old, old uh, computer. And today, people are like, oh, gosh, more emails. I'm going to just, it just feels bad. And then it's like, oh, my God, I got a letter. So um, I just thought that was cute. <laughs> Um, another statistic for you guys who love statistics, only about 3% of the mail that we receive in our mailboxes at home is personal. The rest is what, you know, bills, and I don't even know if there's even much bills anymore since people get them in their email. <laughs> oh, that's the first time I thought about that one. Um, but it's usually ads and things like that, right? So here's the thing. Reading cards, like thank you cards and those types of things are a 100% open rate. Everybody will open a letter. Everyone will open a card. Everyone will. You're not going to leave it sitting there. That tangible thank you card will generate, you guys, listen to this, more referral business than any other form of communication. I promise you. 
people aren't getting thank you cards anymore. And that's what we're gonna talk about here. So I have some other cool statistics. Fewer than 3% of successful salespeople and business owners send thank you cards. Fewer than 3%. Now, this next one is gonna be interesting. Write this book down, How to Sell Anything to Anybody by Joe Girard. You need to go get that book. It's not very big, it's not very long, it's a short one, but highly, highly, highly recommend this. Joe Girard, back in the 70s, I believe he still holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's greatest salesman for 12 consecutive years. He sold, he was a car salesman. He sold an average of six cars every single day. During his selling career, he sold over 13,000 cars. And what was his secret? This is what this book is about. He sent thank you cards. <laughs> Back at the time, there was no automated systems available, like the one I'm gonna show you later. Um, oh, actually hired three full-time employees to buy the cards and hand write messages for him. He sent thank you cards, encouragement cards. He sent cards to people that just walked in that didn't buy a car. He sent cards to people who bought cars. He sent cards to family members. That was his secret. Amazing, right? That's not all. Mary Kate Cosmetics. Um, Lainey, you're in the, the skincare industry. Well, Mary Kay has a $1.2 billion empire. Uh, her key to success, she taught her sales reps sent three handwritten thank you notes every night before they went to bed. Huge company. And I don't know if any of you have heard of Tom Hopkins, but he has written the book, How to Master the Art of Selling, along with many other books. He's super famous in the selling. Um, oh gosh, I, when I had my businesses way, way back, I was reading about him. Um, he has a whole thing called the thank you note habit. Within five years, he went from making less than $50 a month in real estate building an annual sales volume of over 1.4, or no, 14 million, <laughs> 14 million. His secret weapon, he did hand, 10 handwritten thank you cards every single day, and 99% of his business was by referral within three years. So, pretty amazing. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of things, because I do have, there are some rules for thank you cards, okay? This is super important. Um, Thinking people through the process, okay? So meet, when you meet someone, before they do business with you, um, send them a thank you card. I was just talking to someone the other day that actually schedules a coffee date with someone. And then he, I think it was a guy, sends the thank you note to thank them for scheduling time to meet together for the first time. Then sends thank you cards after they meet. And then you can also thank them, of course, when the transaction is complete, if they do buy from you, and thank them down the road, like on the anniversary of the transaction or whatever. That's this, this is things a lot of people don't think about. The other thing, the other crazy thing is this. People don't think about this either. And I know there's certain industries that do this all the time. But when you say thank you, when you send a thank you card, just say thank you only. Okay? If you celebrate a birthday, just say happy birthday. So in other words, don't, um, don't talk about your business. Don't put, for God's sake, don't put your business card in there. You want to make it where they understand that you care about them. And that's, you just want to say happy birthday or thank you. Set yourself apart by reaching out in kindness purely with the intent to stay in touch with your customers. Um, intent, this is a big one. Whatever your intention is, if, you're, if you are going to send a thank you card to someone or a birthday card or whatever, some kind of physical touch card, your intention has to be just make them smile and be happy, not to get business. Because if you even send that card out with the intention of getting business from them, there's some kind of energy in that that doesn't work. And I'm going to tell you a story about that in a second too. Okay, you know, we talked about relationships. We talked about, um, and now we're gonna talk about retention, okay? How many of you have heard of customer lifetime value, CLV, okay? Um, sometimes the letters are mixed up, but it, in other words, it's your lifetime value of a customer. How much is each customer worth? Okay, if you do nothing, if you take nothing else from today, I want you to really, really dig into this concept, okay? Is 
each customer. What is the value? So for example, in my tutoring business, well, it was my school basically, um, my after school program and summer camp, we had a place for kids to be all day, every day, in other words. So I knew um, when a new parent would walk in with like a kindergartner or a first grader, I was so excited because they might sign up for just, you know, for one month, maybe it was $500. I wasn't thinking that, oh, I might make $500 today uh, if they sign up, right? My head was going, oh my gosh, I need to take such good care of them because if they come for one month and then they want to stay for the whole year, that's $500 times a month, which is $6,000. And if they're in, um, if they're only in kindergarten, first grade, and they're going to stay with me another however many years till they're in college, that could be a lot of money. And I'm telling you, my very first student I got when I started my tutoring business out of my house, it was just tutoring out of my house was when I started. I put one ad in the newspaper way before internet and all that stuff. And I got one client and it was happened to be a mom with a first grader. She told everyone, she told everyone on the block, I took such good care of them. They got birthday cards for me. I, I, I loved on them so much that they told all of their neighbors, their neighbors told people they stayed with me till they went to college and I'm telling you that one that one family was worth probably millions with all the people that they referred to me so think of your customer lifetime values you should all kind of know that average number okay so this is gonna be interesting <laughs> so I love new beetles and I'm very very sad they're not making them anymore but um, I've owned seven of them. Okay, so all those are my beetles. The one, the second one, actually, is, they had two sets of flames there. That's the one that I was in by the truck. Um, a big Ford F-250 truck hit me, and that car saved my life. And I'm still here today because of that car. So I'm kind of a fan of them. Um, the pink one right there, the big one, that's the one I have right now. I love that car so much. It's beautiful. Um, but here's, I'm not trying to brag about my cars. Here's what, this is a huge teaching lesson, you guys. I want you to think about this. I want you to see what, you, what you're thinking when I say this. Every single one of these cars, I started in 2001. I bought all seven cars, all from a different dealership, all from a different salesperson. Okay, think about that for a second. <laughs> Every one of those, I, I from someone else and I can't even tell you the name or I don't even remember who sold me that pink one less than two years ago never heard from him again <laughs> um, so think about that and uh, let that sink in what would have happened if that guy that sold me that first little uh, cute little yellowish green highlighter green car would have kept in touch with me sent me thank you cards like Joe Gerard did um, how much money did he leave on the table right so let's talk more about customer retention. I'm going to give you some alarming statistics. The number one reason a customer does not come back is because they forget about you. Because they forget about you. Okay. Customers do not leave because of price. This is also true. A lot of people think, oh, they're, they left me because it's too expensive. And they're probably going to tell you that. But the bottom line is 85% or more, I think, of clients are lost because they don't feel appreciated. And I'm gonna tell you something. I, I just have to tell this other story. When I had my tutoring business and I started it, like I said, I started out of my house. Um, it was after I worked for a big, huge um, uh, tutoring company. It was very expensive. And I, it was really hard for me because I had to turn a lot of people down because I was in an area where people really didn't have the money to spend on um, how expensive this tutoring business was. So it made me sad. So I thought, okay, and I started out of my house and I decided to be the cheapest tutoring uh, business in the, in the area. <laughs> so I didn't charge very much for my tutoring. And then I ended up opening a brick and mortar. I partnered up with a teacher supply store and I had a lot more expenses. And I heard, um, I think Tiffany said that she has a uh, brick and mortar and she would know. And if some of you have been in that, it's very expensive have an actual building and the whole nine yards everything's more expensive so I had to raise my prices and I was so scared I'm like if I don't raise my prices I'm closing my doors 
So here's what happened. Um, I started raising, I just raised it a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. And it's like, okay, nobody left. And then I said, well, okay, I'm going to try it again. And I raised my prices a little higher and I still kept taking care of my clients and nobody left. Right. And then um, I kept raising my prices until I was literally the most expensive, the highest price tutoring business after school program in anywhere in the area. And guess what? Nobody left. And guess what? We told people about it. So I was the most successful in my town and I was the highest prices. So uh, it was proof to me because I did not spend money on advertising. I just spent money on, I, I didn't really spend money, I spent time building relationships. So it is absolutely true that um, they will stay with you as long as they feel appreciated. And I'm sure you can think of businesses that you've left because you didn't feel appreciated as well. So the thing is, people spend more money trying to get new customers instead of appreciating the ones they already have. It is so expensive to get new customers. It is hard work, it's not very much fun, and it's expensive. So if you focus on the relationship part and building relationships with a few people, you're gonna tell their network, oh, having a business is way more fun. Okay, so I have to just share this story with you too. I don't know if any of you are in real estate or um, know someone in real estate, but it really applies to everyone. This is another really great example. I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you, but basically um, this guy I you know is a realtor in Arizona and he uh, uses a system that I'm gonna talk, tell you about in a little bit um, that I use to build relationships that makes it easy. Well, he uploaded, uh, he started sending cards. He was sending cards to people and he was doing the whole system like we talked about. And um, he realized that he had not uploaded or, or started contacting his way past clients from a long time ago. Clients that he had sold houses or listed houses a long time ago. So he went and he took some time, like a whole day, and he, he found all the addresses and he sent them all cards. And here's what happened. All these cards in that picture, they all came back. They came back undeliverable because the people had moved. And when he did more research and went and looked at the MLS, he realized that they'd all bought houses, new houses, and moved away. They didn't buy the houses from him. <laughs> they bought them from other realtors. And so he actually took time and went through and figured out how much the house sold for, how much his kid commission would be. And he lost uh, over 75,000 in potential commissions because of one thing, he didn't keep in touch with his clients. Because when they wanted a realtor, he didn't think about him anymore because he would not kept in touch. So um, I think that's a pretty good example <laughs> why this is so important. Okay, building long-term relationships rather than encouraging a one-time sale. Appreciated customers become your raving brands with, while increasing your referral business dramatically. So I am gonna tell you, oh, one more thing. Um, Testimonials, this is another, I put, should have put my bonus thing up there. Testimonials, when you start building relationships with people, they will offer testimonials to you. Yelp reviews, um, testimonials on your website, on Facebook. I'm constantly getting people that um, I do something nice for them and then they, sh they call me out on Facebook and, and, and give me testimonials and tell people how great I was or whatever I did for them. So really important to build testimonials. That will build your referral business even more. But lastly, on this section is what you will appreciate, what you appreciate will appreciate, grow. If you want your relationships or your money, your business, anything in your life to grow or get bigger or better, you just simply appreciate them. Okay, so I'm going to go to referrals now because we talked about relationships, retention, I think I drilled that in your head, <laughs> and now referrals. So what is the relationship marketing way to ask referrals? There really is one time that you should ask for, for referrals because I tell everybody, do not ask for them. The one time is this. If a person that you meet does not need your product or service, okay, you don't need it, um, that's a good time to ask them. You can say, you know what, I, I realize that, for example, you guys that have pets, okay, well, if you have a customer, somebody that you know and they don't have a pet, they obviously don't need pottery, right? So you could say, hey, do you know anyone else that has a pet, a dog or a cat that you could refer to me to? Okay, then you can ask for a referral. That's a great one. So the best referral is an unsolicited referral. 
and write this down. Do not ask for a referral. Deserve it. Just deserve it. If you're a nice person, people are going to tell people about you. And this is one of my favorite things. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But they will never, ever forget how you made them feel. Um, I have to share this story with you because this is a big one. You guys are still with me. Um, I was in a networking, uh, actually a chamber mixer uh, a few months ago. And I met this guy and uh, I took a picture of him and I sent, I do this all the time. I, I, I'll show you in a second how I do it. But I, I take a selfie with us and then I sent a nice card that came in the mail that said, oh my gosh, it was really nice to meet you. Um, you know, have a great day, whatever. It was just simple. And he got the card and he called me and he said, hey, so, you know, that was really nice of you. Can we meet? I want to find out more about what you do. And I'm like, yeah, I want to find out what you do. So he was a financial advisor and I went to his office and we had a great conversation and, and um, I said, he said, well, I want to meet again. And I said, well, I'm on my way to Nebraska, from California where I am, uh, to move my father who has dementia into assisted living. And um, I knew it was going to be hard, <laughs> um, but because uh, I just knew it was going to be hard. And um, he said, he even told me, he said, you know, I love working with seniors and, and families and, and he had gone through it with his mom. And anyway, long story short, I, I said, well, I'll let you know when I get back. So when I got back home <laughs> after the hardest time in my entire life, um, I'm telling you, I don't know if any of you have ever had to do that, but it was really, really hard. Um, came back in this card this was an actual card I have it in my hand here I'll show you in a second um, but this is a picture of it that's a picture of me and my dad um, this guy had gone on my Facebook page and I don't even know how he knew that this was my favorite picture of me and my dad um, and he took that picture he put it on the front of a greeting card he wrote this beautiful message and it was just you know ha welcome home because he knew I was gonna get it when I got home Thank you so much for our time together. I've been keeping you and your dad in my prayers. This is a tough time of transition for both of you. Looking forward to working together. Um, I'm going to ask you this question. Who am I going to send referrals to? If someone says, you know, I'm looking for a financial planner, who do you think I'm going to give their name to right away? I don't think, I think you know. <laughs> ah. Anyway. Um, I don't know if you've read this book, uh, The Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer. I actually finally read it not too long ago. And this is amazing, okay? I was blown away by this. But first of all, and I knew this part, that the simple act of kindness directed toward another improves the functioning of the immune system. It stimulates the production of serotonin, that feel-good chemical in your brain, in both the recipient and the person extending the kindness. So if I'm sending someone a card, I get that serotonin, which I, this weekend, I'll tell you that story. The person getting it also gets that shot of serotonin as well. It's all awesome. Um, this is the part that blew my mind. Even more amazing is that people observing the act of kindness, people just working, hearing it, uh, have similar beneficial results. So I don't know if when I told you the story with um, about my dad, you know, this uh, um, and saw this picture and heard the story, and if you felt anything, that was that serotonin. So that's pretty darn amazing, I think. <laughs> okay, and lastly, I'm getting toward the end of this part here. Um, I think I've drilled in your head, but this is really important. Giving to give, purely to give, and I'm going to tell you a story again. Um, I've had a, a couple of them, actually. Uh, one was an actual realtor who, um, <laughs> he said, oh, I'm going to send a bunch of cards. I'm, I'm going to, he said, I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to send cards to all the, everybody in my neighborhood. Um, so he, it was 4th of July, and he made some cute 4th of July cards. I helped him design it, made sure it wasn't salesy or, you know, it was just to wish him happy 4th of July sent the cards out and a couple weeks later he called me and he goes sue you know this doesn't work and i said what do you mean he goes not one person listed their house with me <laughs> and i said okay that's why because you weren't giving to just give you weren't just giving to go and and meet the people and and be nice to them you actually pushed send and sent those cards out to get their business and that doesn't work so there is an energy 
and um, when you do this kind of thing. So really just keep that in mind because what you send out in life is what comes back to you over and over again. So I think, you know, I don't really have to say anything more than that. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you one other thing. I'm gonna tell you how I build relationships on Facebook. Okay, a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, you know, going to all these networking things and talking to people in person, um, which you definitely need to do. But there is a way that I have figured out how to build relationships online, on social media, rather than putting all of our stuff up there about our businesses and, and advertising and marketing and putting up, you know, all this stuff. I found a really super fun way, and it kind of blows my mind that this works so well, but um, let me tell you how I build relationships with people I don't even know on Facebook, okay? I have almost 5,000 friends on my Facebook page, and I don't know most of them, okay? A lot of people that follow me. So here's what I did a few months ago that just was so much fun, and I'm telling you, it just changed everything. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what you should all be doing. <laughs> here's my secret. Like, no one else is doing this, so shh. All right, so here's what I did. I posted on Facebook, post your favorite pet picture. Um, I also posted a couple of them, with post your favorite Facebook picture. So I do this all the time. I'll say, post a picture that you love. And the pet thing worked better than anything else I did. So I put up, I've done this twice, and I've had over 100 people, most I didn't know, posted their pictures of their pets dogs or cats usually and one tortoise <laughs> so a, a few of the ones with the pictures of the pets here are, are a few of the ones that sent them and so what i did is i actually right clicked on the picture i downloaded the picture to my computer or my phone and i made a card and i just wrote on the card all i wrote i should put it up here i just said something like wow thank you so much for posting your picture of fluffy on my facebook post um so cute i want to send or um uh, I said, enjoy the memory, something like that. But here's the thing, I, I, I forgot the, one, the most important part. People ask me, well, how did you get their mailing address? Because I didn't know everybody's mailing address. And so I said, well, all I did was ask them. <laughs> so like they posted their picture of their dog and then I just went on there and I sent them a message. And like I said, I don't know these people at all. They were from all over actually the world. And um, I said, hey, I said, can I, I have your mailing address because I want to send you a surprise. You and Fluffy a surprise, where their dog or cat's name was. And everybody gave me their mailing address and I mailed them the card. And it was so much fun. I made it like the super fun thing. I just spent a day, it didn't even take me that long. And I sent all these cards of people's pets on the fronts of the cards. And oh my gosh, the love I got back from people went crazy. So now I built relationships with like over a hundred people that I didn't even know because what did I do? I saw a picture of their beloved pet, put it on a card, sent it to them, and just said, that was just really cool. And here's a five by seven card. You can put it in a frame. That's how I build relationships on Facebook. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you guys are still with me here. Whoops. Uh-oh. Go back. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me do this. Um, I'm going to, I don't know if you guys are still with me here, but I'm going to, I'm going to actually stop the share for a second. Da, 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 da. Oh, some people are still here. Hey guys. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm glad you're here with me. So I want to know um, if you guys would like to know how I do this. I me to show you how I do this because it's really cool. Um, are you getting some value from what I'm and out there, those of you, I can see your faces. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're still here because I talk fast and I can't believe it's been like an hour. <laughs> okay. Now, let me show you what I use to build these relationships. Well, before I do that, I'm going to just kind of show you on here. Um, here's, where's the picture that I wanted to show you? Wow. Here's, the, here's the card that the guy sent me um, of my, my dad. And then, you know, he put the, the message on the inside. Oh. I spilled my tea, so anyway, there. Um, I have tons and tons of cards. Here's an example of the card that I would send to people on Facebook, you know, and um, you just write a message and, and put it on the back of the card. So I'm gonna show you how I do that super fast. It's a blast. Um, and as long as you wanna see that, I will go ahead and share this back again. Okay, here we go. Come on. 
Okay, it's called Send Out Card. I know a couple of you actually already use this system, but um, oh my gosh, it is, when I found this, I didn't realize how powerful it was. And um, I'm telling you guys, if you wanna save tons of money and time, the system is the best follow-up system, referral generating, whatever you can have. So it's something that you can use. It's, okay, so I guess I should have go back. You can do this if you want, or you can just do it the old fashioned way. So what, I don't have time, go to the store and browse for cards for hours on end and find some cards that I'm hoping everybody will like and then bring them home and hand write them out and then they're gonna find addresses and address the, you know, on the top of the, the envelope and, and their address and then lick stamps and then go to the post office. I just don't have time, like I'm busy, super busy. I did that for my tutoring business. I did that. That was part of our system. I did all of that stuff. I spent lots of time and lots of money doing it the old fashioned way. But when this system came out and somebody showed it to me, I was just like, you've got to be joking. This cannot be this easy. So here's what I do. There are, um, ah, man. Okay. First of all, um, I, when I get off of here, I might be able to show you from my phone. I'm going to see if I can do that, but you can do this from your phone and you can do this from the computer. Okay, um, there's three ways you can send cards. You can send heartfelt cards, which is what I do every single day, or group cards where you can like send out your holiday cards. You can create one card and send it, or cards that are scheduled out. So this one right here is, is my golden ticket to everything. My golden ticket to building relationships. It's called Heartfelt Card Sends. So basically, this is what the, the online version looks like. So you pick out your card, you can put a photo on the front or on the inside, like this is an example of putting a card on the uh, picture on the inside. You can put collages, you can do literally anything on this card. You can choose um, the font size, because I can't see very well. So I, have, I make the fonts really big. <laughs> they have different fonts. You can even put your own handwriting font in there and your own signature, so it looks like your signature, it is your signature and your own handwriting. Um, you can choose colors, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, a heartfelt card is what this business was built on, and because of I only do business with, with businesses that have uh, kindness or heart, something is heart centered. This one is an amazing company. And when I heard that the founder of this company, his story blew my mind. And what it basically was, I'll tell you the short version of the story is he was him and his young family were, uh, he got a job in the East coast. He was living in um, Salt Lake city, Utah, and he was getting ready to leave. And he told his mother goodbye and they were in a hurry. And he had this, what he calls a prompting. He even wrote a book called Promptings. And he had this prompting that he needed to tell his brother goodbye. His brother was like 30 something. And he saw them, him across the way, you know, block away or something. And he said, I'm in a hurry. I just, I don't have time. And he didn't act on his prompting to tell his brother goodbye. Two months later, he got a call in the middle of the night that his brother got suddenly killed. Um, tragic accident. And he was killed. And all Cody Bateman, the founder, can say is he just, his story, I just listened to it again the other day, it brings tears every time I hear it, is he just stared it at this brick wall and said, you know, I, I'm going to create something. I promised Chris, his father's name, I believe it's Chris, I'm going to create a way for people to act on their problems when they want to tell someone they love them or appreciate them, they can do it instantly where they... Um, where they can do it right away. And so that's where this heartfelt card send comes in. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can send these basically for free um, anywhere in the world. So that is what this company is built on. Now, um, oh, and you can add gifts. You can put gifts in there too. These are examples of some of the gifts, including cards um, I can get into later. Um, there is a, for marketing purposes, for your marketing purposes, or if you wanna send out holiday cards, there is a way for you to create a card and then upload your entire contact list in there. You can group them into different groups. So for example, if you have a team for your business, you can say, I want this card to go out to these people, push send, and like within minutes, your holiday cards or your group send cards are sent. Um, now this is so amazing. This scheduled card sends, this is for people who want to, let's say you meet someone at a networking group and you want to put them in a system where, cards are gonna go out automatically. 
So you could say, I want this card to go out immediately. I want this card to go out on their birthday. I want this card to go out on the holiday. I want this one to go out June 1st, whatever. You can literally set up cards to go out on certain dates and set it and forget it. So that's pretty cool too. That's great for a lot of companies that want to make sure everybody gets their birthday card and they don't want to remember it <laughs> all the time. Um, there's also campaign store. Yeah, they have cards for every industry, like almost every industry, and they keep adding more. So for real estate, medical, beauty salons, um, they even have for re uh, network marketing companies, like inspirational cards, super cool that you can actually um, purchase uh, separate ones that are um, your industry. Um, this is how you get started. So a lot of people want to go, well, how much does it cost? You know? So honestly, you could be on a free account. You can completely just be on a free account and, uh, and you can use the system for free. Um, you just pay per card. It's like going to the um, store and finding a card that I just saw somewhere. I was somewhere, I think a car uh, wash place. The cards were like almost were like $10 each, $10 for a card. And it's not even personalized. So, you can be on a free account. It's only $275 per card. If you want to send a group of cards, you pay a little bit less than that. Um, and then you add an extra dollar for pictures. So this is like the basic a la carte. If you're just going to send a card here and there, you can totally be on the free account. So I have lots of people that do that if they're not big card senders or they're just kind of getting started. <laughs> the next thing is only $17 a month. This gives you access to their amazing uh, contact management system where you can, like I said, you can upload all of your contacts. With, I will help you do that into the system. You can enter their birthdays, spouse birthdays, kids' birthdays, and anniversaries. You can, you can put them in groups. You can keep track of them. Um, this weekend, I just I went through and it gave me a notification that certain people's birthdays were in February. So I just went in, you look at their name and then they just push send card and I can send them a card like right there. Um, you get 15% discount on gifts and you don't pay any extra for pictures. You can completely customize them and your card's only $2.25 a card and it's $2 a card if you send them as a group. Okay, but this next one is unbelievable. And this is what I use. Uh, every day and I'm telling you I spend less than the price of postage to send out cards um, 97 a month if you become a, a massive card sender which you will eventually because you will get uh, addicted <laughs> like me you can be on a 97 a month subscription where listen to this you can send unlimited that means as many as you want heartfelt single card sends includes stamps get this anywhere in the world so June, who was with us, I think she had to go. Um, June has a lot of, she's from Holland, and so she has family in Holland, and her husband has family in New Zealand, and they're sending cards there, and they don't pay any, it says free, every time they send the card, because they're on this premium subscription, which, by the way, there's no contract, so you can try it for a month, and if you don't send cards, you can go back to free, it doesn't matter. Literally, um, this weekend, I sent 80 cards, on Saturday um, because I just I don't know I just thought I've got to send a bunch of cards today and I just started getting going and I couldn't stop and I was the happiest person at the end of the day I can't even imagine because I'm on the 97 and every time I send a card it says free so um, it's like I said unlimited uh, if you want to send a card it says standard card what that means a dollar 75 means if you're gonna send two or more cards out the same card to two or more people I guess I should say so like holiday cards or if you're gonna send a group of cards it's a dollar you pay a dollar 75 plus postage on those because those aren't heartfelt cards they're not what heartfelt like the one with me and my dad you get 30% on gifts and um, Oh, and you get 10 loyalty reports. So you actually, they actually give you 10 free group cards that you can send every month, to add up every month if you don't use them. And then if you guys are really want to send a lot of cards or you have a business where you want to send at least 100 group cards every month, um, a lot of things like dental offices and chiropractors and things like that, like people that are constantly sending group cards, there's a 147 a month subscription that includes that, and but all the heartfelt cards are still free. 
So that's that's the system. Um, um, it was pretty fun. And so every one of you today get a free account So because uh, you get to send a card for free. So those are the four subscriptions, just so you know that about send out cards. And if, if you know big businesses, I don't think anybody in New York those, they do have big packages where you, if you're sending thousands of cards um, as a group, you know, if you want to talk to me about that, you can, but I don't think uh, anybody here really needs that. Um, the other thing is you can send in your handwriting font and your signatures. It's only $49 for that. They also have a, some sets, a couple sets of those uh, cards that can go out, scheduled out. Um, you can ask me about that if you're curious. But yeah, they have a lot of cool extra things if you want them. And then lastly, uh, if you want to get all of your cards paid for, there is an actual way for you to have all your cards sent for free, have the company pay you. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can let me know when we meet individually. But literally, I am a referral partner for them. And uh, all my cards are free. And so I can explain how that works. It's very, very cool. If you know people to share it with and you want to share it with other people and they sign up, it's like an affiliate program, the best one I've ever found in my life. And then Send Out Cards pays you. And you only need four people to share it with and all your cards are free. It's just amazing. So you can ask me about that. Um, the way you get started, I want you all to try sending a card for free. You can go to crockpotmarketing.com. That's my fun little uh, link. Um, or you can go on your phone and download the Send Out Cards app. Which I do this all the time. I use my app to send the cards. And that's my sponsor ID there. And you can ask me for that later too. Um, so all you do, you get your free Send Out Cards account. Go send a free card to someone that you're thinking of right now that you need to appreciate. And then you can choose a subscription or stay on the free account, it doesn't matter. You can upload contacts into your relationship and send out kindness into the world. <laughs> so that is, oh, I put realtor resources. Um, I have lots of, of resources for different industries. So I'm gonna stop the share here so I can have, see if anybody's still with me. Oh my gosh, you stayed. <laughs> I'm very curious if you guys have questions or comments or anything um what do you think unmute yourselves and let's hear from you guys <laughs> you know it seems basically all about just be a human being give a shit <laughs> <laughs> not not to down <laughs> it's, like, it's like be a human being and give a shit about the person you're talking to yes yes look at carrie over there like i knew she was gonna say something i knew she was gonna swear <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> that is so funny. It is so true, you guys. I mean, it's changed my life. It, like, just being a card sender has totally changed my life. I have so many testimonials of people using this and just doing it. I mean, even if you don't use this system and you just do it yourself, oh, it makes you so happy. You should have seen me Saturday. I literally sent 80 cards on Saturday. And every time I do, I push go and it says free. And then it says, congratulations, you just made the world a better place. And I'm like, oh, yay. I'm like, and then I'm like running the house. And my sister's like, what's wrong with you? Are you on drugs or something? I'm like, yes, serotonin. I don't know. <laughs> Sue, does that count for Valentine's too? Anything. Okay. I sent a bunch of Valentine's. They have beautiful Valentine's cards. Really, really pretty ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um. I actually look at the chat. Laney, did you do have any questions? I know we can't. Chat on our mute. <laughs> I know. I feel bad that you're muted. Uh, okay. Oh, good, good, good. So, um, let's see. I um, I was going to, uh, my, my phone is not hooked. I was going to show you how I do this on my phone. Um, when I go to networking events, I take my phone and I download the Send Out Cards app. So I don't know if we can see, but like there's a Send Out Cards over there, right there. So I just click my Send Out Cards um, uh, thing and you can literally go on and it looks like this and you can send all kinds of different cards. There's thousands of cards, they, change, they add new every day. So it's not like you're just stuck with the same ones. And I can just click photo card and I can literally go in here and find a photo on my phone or on somebody. I go on Facebook all the time and I just scroll through every morning and go, oh, that's a cute picture. And I just go and I 
hold the phone, hold the picture down. It saves it to my phone and I make a quick, and I say a really quick, I just voice text a message and I push send. And in like a minute, I just sent them a card and I get so much love back. So anyway, yes. Okay, so Carrie, I don't know, and even you, Sue, I don't know if you guys had this issue, especially with this free sample thing. With doing the cards, people sign up for the free sample, they, you know, want to just put their phone number in and that's it because they want to skate by. So I'd be like, oh, I need your address. Well, I'm not giving you that. I'm like, well, we got to mail you the free sample. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, well, the post office does. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, well, with send out cards, you can't send your own things. They have they have their own store of things that they can. But um, I, I think I've never had a pro problem with anybody giving me their mailing address, ever. Usually they go, oh, you want my email? No, I need your, you know, there's a mailbox in front of your house. Like this one guy did not get it for the longest time. But, um, when you say, I'm gonna send you a surprise, or I'm gonna send you some fun snail mail, they're like, snail mail? Really? I don't, I never get that. And they just go, I, I can't wait to see. I, I actually posted on Facebook, if you look on my Facebook page, um, I put, when is your birthday? Oh, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say, the one person said, my birthday's today, and I texted her, I don't know her, and I said, hey, what's your, I wanna send you a birthday card, um, something cool for your birthday, and she's like, okay, cool, here's my address. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. seems all the people in Colorado, only people in Colorado have kind of pulled that. Huh. It's Thanks. Colorado people. That's funny. It's, oh my gosh. They just like get all. Well, how, how, are they, how are they supposed to get the sample though if they don't give you the address? Yeah. And that's what I said. They, they, they've got to get the sample there and they're like, well, I don't want to give everybody my address. And so then they just don't even want a sample. I'm like, well, the food has to get, if you do purchase, everything's going to shipped to you, so we'll need your address then. Oh, well, I don't do that. Like, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I did a couple here and there, but I just, I just explained to them that, you know, it's just me. I don't sell your information. It's just me. And sometimes that kind of calms them down. I, I don't know. Yeah. And and sometimes those people you just don't want. If they're going to be that much of a bother, I just move to the next next person. Yeah, and if they keep getting anti. I'm just like, okay, it's cool. Well, I appreciate you being interested, and yeah. you know, so let me know when you're ready. Yeah. So here's the thing. This is a good point, though. So when you're trying to do something like that, you they know you're trying to sell them a product. I mean, of course, if someone said, hey, can I send you some samples of my whatever, what anything? They're like, okay, well, yeah, but I know you're going to try to sell me it. So in their head, they're thinking, yeah, they're, they're going to want me to buy this. So it's not building a relationship. So maybe putting that on hold and focusing on, hey, I want to send you a birthday card. Or mm -hmm. I sent, I'm updating my holiday cards. Oh my gosh, I found, I got something really cool I want to send you in the mail. You know, and literally, very Almost everybody has given it to me, even people I don't even know. So once you send that card, like mm -hmm. you guys both, you should be posting, post your favorite pet picture all day long, or you should be going through people's Facebook pages and that you know have pets, and then um, just right click on it and say, hey, I got a special surprise for you and you know Max, <laughs> or whatever, and send them a card. Um, it's a blast, and then they, they get it and they just, it's amazing. I get people that will Facebook lives and show the card and say, Oh my God, Sue is so amazing. You can find her at her website and you know, go follow her. And it's like, wow, just because I sent him a card with whatever on it. So if you well, that could be a way of reopening those connections as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you can go on their Facebook account and find out when their birthday is. Yes, that's easy. Yeah. Most people have their birthdays there. They do. <laughs> And just say, hey, I want to send you a birthday card like that girl. <laughs> it's so funny. It makes me laugh all the time because it's so simple. It's just so simple. And, and it's amazing how many people overthink it. Like, oh, I get asked all the time, well, how do you get their mailing address? Just ask them. <laughs> so anyway, but, yeah. So any other questions or anything on that? Um, 
I'd like to set up appointments with you guys because I want to find out more about your businesses, especially, um, Kenya, I've never met anybody. I've, nobody's ever told me about that, your business before. So I want to know more about that. There's 3 million Rodan and Fields consultants out here. So that's where I live. Oh my gosh. Everybody's a Rodan. It's funny. So on Facebook, all I see is all their stuff. Same thing. They post the same advertisements on their Facebook pages all the time. And it makes me sad because I unfollow them because I can't, I'm tired of seeing it. So it's like if they would spend more time building relationships with people and send them cards with stuff and, and show send before and after pictures of their current clients. My gosh, that's like so no brainer to me. Oh, you have a kitty cat like me. So, um, and then you guys with the pets, that's like, to me is like the biggest no brainer of all. I have to tell you a funny story. So, um, and you should do this with at the dog park. If you guys have dogs or whatever and go to the dog park or go, everybody brings their dogs in. Like my sister, oh, I'll give you that example. My sister has a retail store and people bring their dogs in all the time into the store. They're always walking their dogs down the main street. So my sister takes a picture, said, hey, let me take a picture of your cute dog. And she usually takes the picture by some of her merchandise, right? And then she takes the picture and says, oh, give me your, I'm gonna send you the five by seven. And they're like, oh, really? And she sends, she gets their address and she sends them a card right there. Well, the other day, um, oh my gosh, a lady came in and she had the card. I think it was a dog. Uh, well, obviously it was her dog because they don't people don't bring their cats in there. So it was a dog, and the lady was crying, and she said, "Kathy, you have no idea what this means to me. My dog is not doing well. He's um, he's probably not going to make it, and uh, you have no idea how special this was." And she's crying, and Kathy's crying, and it was just it meant so much to her. And she comes in the store and buys stuff all the time because she knows how much Kathy cares about her. And she's going to treasure that picture, that card forever, just like I'm going to treasure this one of my dad. So if you have that in your mind all the time, especially pets, oh my gosh, constantly people, I'm always seeing people that lost their pets. I always take the photo and put it on a card and send them a sympathy card. You know, it's like, don't keep it forever. You know? Sue, I might have missed this because I had to answer my front door while you were talking. <laughs> but did you show them what the back of the card looks like? How they oh, my God. That's so funny. I forgot that. Oh, this is the best part for your business. You can literally do anything on the back. Like, here's a, someone who is a realtor. You can brand the back of your card. This is a lady who's an organizer. She puts her brand on the back. Here's my sister and I. Um wine club retention program we're going to wineries and so we have a back that has about our wine club retention um let's see if i can find some other ones Oop, somebody's calling um oh this is usually like i have my own i'm going to send you guys all cards so you have to send me your mailing addresses so i have um I have my own backs um you can do just about anything and i also forgot to tell you you have regular two panel cards you know this is what i do it out of networking groups all the time is I take a selfie and then I put a nice little message on the side and then my branding's on the back. Um, you can also send a postcard. So this is a road down in fields girl, my friend, she sent me that. Um, let's see, you can also send a three panel card. I don't know if any of you are in BNI, but Ivan Meisner is a huge supporter of send out cards, but you can send a three panel card like this. And you can send, these are really, really cool. And just so you know, they're all five by seven, so they go in a frame. This is a flat card. So this is a winery that's, that takes a picture of their new wine club members and then uh, sends them this card and it's just a flat card and they can put their branding on the back. So yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, Carrie has one, I think with you and your dogs, right? Yes. Back, which is cool. I have one with my cats on it if I want. And I have different backs for different people that I send the cards to. Thank you for reminding me. I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> Anybody else have questions? Vanessa, hi. Nice to see you. Hello. <laughs> have you been on the whole time? Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. So, so tell me about your business. I didn't get to ask you. I actually have two. My main one